Welcome back to part two in this module on error handling. In this part, we'll cover the C standard library's approach to error handling. The C standard library provides an error library, an error no.h, which is short for error number. This library defines several standard error codes and provides some limited utilities. The library defines a globally available integer variable named error no that standard library functions can set in the event of an error. Anywhere in your program, you can check the status of this variable to determine if an error occurred or not. By convention, the default value is zero, indicating that no error occurred. The C standard library actually only defines three standard error codes. EDOM indicates an error occurred in the domain of a function. ERANGE indicates that an error occurred in the range of a function. And EILSEQ indicates that an illegal byte sequence was encountered. All of these codes are actually macros defined using the hash define preprocessor directive. We'll focus on the first two, as the third is quite rare to deal with directly. An EDOM error indicates an error in the domain value of a function. Recall that in mathematics, a function maps a domain of values to a range of values. Thus, the domain is the set of all possible input values. And so EDOM simply means that an illegal input was given to the function. A simple example would be the square root function in the standard math library. It's only defined for non-negative values. Thus, calling the square root with a negative 1 value would result in an EDOM error. An ERANGE error indicates an error in the range value of a function. The range is the set of all possible outputs. This error would occur if there was an error in the output value of a function. For example, the logarithm of 0 is undefined. So calling log of 0 would result in an ERANGE error. Let's take a look at a full demonstration. Here I've got a simple program set up. Our first call to the square root function is on a value of 2. We print it out and print out the error no value, which is going to be 0 because there's no error with calling square root of 2. The second call to square root uses the value stored in A, which is negative 1. This will result in an EDOM error. We can also check for equality against these macros. The standard string library also provides a utility that can extract an error message and print it out. Our last example is when we call log on the value C, which has a value of 0. This will result in an ERANGE error. We also print out the message provided by the standard string library. Let's take a look at the output. Here's the output. Calling the square root on a negative value results in not a number and a mysterious error code of 33, which is an EDOM error. The message is simply a generic numerical argument out of domain. Calling the logarithm on a value of 0 results in an ERANGE error, which has again the mysterious value 34 and a generic message of numerical result out of range. Not too extensive, but you get the idea of how error handling is approached. In fact, the POSIX standard defines many more error codes. These error codes are mostly for systems programming. They include such errors as no such file or directory, out of memory, or network is down. Let's take a look at the full list and documentation. Here's the documentation for a POSIX compliant errorno.h file. You see the familiar 33 and 34, which correspond to EDOM and ERANGE, respectively. But there are many more error codes. 20 is not a directory, which has the macro value ENOTDIR. In fact, POSIX compliance systems define 131 error codes that can be used for systems programming. Remember that an error code of zero by convention means no error. A similar concept is error codes. When a program quits, it can return an error code value to the operating system. This value can be used externally to determine if an entire program's execution was successful or not. For example, a segmentation fault usually results in a program exiting with an error code of 139. 
Actual exit code numbers are not really standardized. However, the standard library does define two standard flags. Exit failure, which usually has a value of 1, and exit success, which usually has a value of 0 that indicates no error. Let's take a look at a quick demonstration. Here I've got a very simple program that reads in two command line arguments and adds them together. If the user fails to provide us two command line arguments, or three total, we'll exit with the exit failure flag. However, if they do provide us with two command line arguments, we go ahead and print out the result, and then we return the exit success flag. Let's take a look at a demonstration. This was a successful run. The exit code is stored in a special variable available in my shell. Here it has a value of zero. If we don't provide enough command line arguments, say just one, then it'll exit with that failure flag, which has a value of one. To demonstrate that you can output any type of exit code that you want, let me go ahead and output 123 instead. Now a successful run results in an error code of 123. In the next part, we'll focus on how to do these kind of things with our own functions.